today. FTX's bankruptcy lawyers say the company just recovered more than $5 billion in assets. New court documents reveal the big name investors who backed the troubled exchange. And Binance is planning a hiring spree even as the rest of the industry slashes jobs. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Pippa Stevens. The digital currency market is pushing lower this morning. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin lost about two-thirds of 1%, Ether dropped about 1.2%, and Polygon fell about three-quarters of 1%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First up, FTX has recovered at least $5 billion in assets. The company's attorneys told a Delaware bankruptcy judge that the assets were cash, crypto, and securities. That $5 billion figure also includes, quote, any value to holdings of dozens of illiquid tokens, where our holdings are so large relative to the total supply that our positions cannot be sold without substantially affecting the market for the token. Essentially, that means that these tokens are stuck and can't be traded without a significant hit to the crypto market. The recovery of these assets comes as federal prosecutors plan to seize at least half a billion dollars in FTX-linked assets as part of their case against Sam Bankman-Fried. At the same time, new court documents reveal more of the big name backers investing in the troubled exchange. Shareholders who lost money in FTX's collapse include New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft and billionaire hedge fund manager Paul Tudor Jones. Their investments were listed among those from SoftBank, Sequoia Capital, and more. We poured over the court filings to analyze the exchange's top investors, and you can find that over at CNBC.com. Next, while most crypto firms are downsizing during the crypto bear market, Binance has other plans. CZ says the crypto exchange is planning for a hiring spree in 2023 and will look to grow its headcount by between 15 and 30 percent. CZ also said the exchange isn't super efficient and the company needs to get, quote, well organized ahead of the next bull market. Rival exchanges like Kraken, Wobi, and Coinbase have all announced huge layoffs after nearly $1.5 trillion was wiped off the crypto market. Just today, Coindesk reported that crypto software developer Consensus plans to cut 100 jobs from its 900-person workforce. Last, troubled crypto bank Silvergate took out billions in loans from a bank meant to support housing, according to American Banker. In fourth quarter financial metrics, Silvergate disclosed $4.3 billion in loans from the Federal Home Loan Bank of San Francisco as it tried to fend off a run on customer deposits. Those deposits dropped from $11.9 billion at the end of Q3 to $3.8 billion at the end of Q4. Now, the FHLB is meant to support home lending, not the crypto industry. And as American Banker points out, the bank is first in line for repayment payment if Silvergate were to file for bankruptcy ahead of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or FDIC. The FDIC, which usually gets priority in order to ensure stability of the banking system, would then get what's left of Silvergate's assets. It could be a sign of just how entangled the crypto industry has become with traditional finance and the growing risk of contagion as companies struggle to stay afloat. All right, on to our main story. Blockchain data reveals the number of Bitcoin billionaires plummeted a whopping 73% compared to a year ago as crypto losses topped $2 trillion in 2022. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Dan Ashmore, an analyst at CoinJournal, about the data he analyzed and what trends stood out to him. What a difference a year makes. As we were entering 2022, Bitcoin was trading around $46,000, a drop from its peak of nearly $69,000 in November of 2021, but more than double the $17,000 price we're seeing today. What do you make of this and where do you see prices going this year, especially following the collapse of FTX? Do you think we will ever see Bitcoin hit $68,000 again? Yeah, it's uh, completely remarkable uh, how far prices have fallen. But I think when you assess it in the context of how different the economy is today, you, you know, entering 2022, we were still at the tail end of one of the longest and most explosive bull runs in, in recent memory, like all going the whole way back to the 2008 financial crash. And then the world is, is gripped with this inflation crisis uh, post, post pandemic. And we've transitioned to a completely new interest rate paradigm where we've gone from zero rates uh, to one of the, the swiftest rate hike cycles in recent memory. So 
you know, that sucked the liquidity out of all these risk assets. And there is not many assets that are more risky than cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. So uh, when you consider it in that uh, regard, it's not overly surprising that we have seen this uh, massive pullback. As for whether we can get back to where we were, I think that right now is wholly contingent upon the macro climate. You know, in the last month or so, we have seen slightly more positive readings that inflation has maybe peaked. It's It's got a long way to go yet, but it's definitely brighter now than what it looks like a month or two ago. But we still have a long way to go to get back to that $69,000 number you say. I think if we ever do get back to that point, it's a good bit down the line. This is not going to be an overnight process. You know, it's, it's fallen extremely quickly, but the rise will take a little bit longer. Longer, but I think it depends on a on a whole range of, of variables in the macro climate going our way. And then obviously the, the scandals that plagued the industry in terms of, you know, the Luna crash in, in May, you would Celsius in June and FTX, like you, you uh, note in November. Uh, hopefully these uh, instances are in the past. And if the macro climate cooperates, then Bitcoin can begin to run up. But there's certainly a long way to go. And this is uh, not going to be solved anytime soon. So you looked at on-chain data and found that Bitcoin millionaires dropped more than 70% over the past year. You discovered that entering 2022, there were 90,000 addresses containing more than $1 million worth of Bitcoin. Today, that number is around 24,000. So what does that show you? The director at Coin Journal was quoted as saying that this piece of data best summarizes how ugly 2022 was for investors. Do you agree with that sentiment? I think that's exactly right. Um, you know, a, a quick glance at the Bitcoin price chart will, will show you that it's fallen from $69,000 to $17,000, which should tell you all you need to know about how ugly the year was. But yeah, when you the, the fascinating thing about the blockchain is that you can see what wallets hold what amount of Bitcoin. Uh, we've never really had that capacity before until Bitcoin came along. So we can contact, we can quantify this exactly. And we can see, like you say, that 90,000 wallets held over $1 million worth of Bitcoin entering the year. But fast forward to the end of the year, and, and that's fallen down 73%. And a lot is made of these uh, crypto millionaires who, 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 you know, Bitcoin went from a fraction of a penny up, up to thousands of dollars. And a lot's made of these millionaires who, who made just astronomical amounts of money. Um, and while a lot of them still are up quite a lot, it, it, it does paint a pretty grim picture that you know, the, that amount of Bitcoin billionaires has scaled down so significantly. Looking at the data, you also found that the number of whole coiners, as they're called, you know, the number of investors holding one or more Bitcoins is at an all time high, jumping 20 percent as it became much more attainable. What does this signify? It signifies exactly that, that it is uh, a little bit more of an achievable hurdle for the average investor. When Bitcoin was up past $50,000, $60,000, you know, it's it's simply just not attainable for the everyday investor to own one Bitcoin. And now that it's scaled back to $17,000, it's a lot more achievable for a lot more people. And we, we see, like you say, a massive jump in that. And that 20% jump in one year is, is actually very significant. So the amount of people that are now holding a Bitcoin, one whole Bitcoin dwarfs what we've seen uh, throughout the pandemic period. What else jumped out at you when analyzing the Bitcoin data? What other trends did you notice? I think one of the most significant things I've noticed recently is tracking the percent of the Bitcoin supply that is in a profit or loss making position. So of the 19.3 million Bitcoins that are currently in circulation at the end of the year, the majority of these were actually in a loss making position. So 48% of wallets were in profit, which means that the bulk of these were in a loss making position compared to when those Bitcoins were bought, which is actually quite staggering when you think about the scale of the rise up. So Bitcoin returned 230% at an annualized rate between 2011 and 2021. It's it's obviously wasn't a mainstream financial asset for the bulk of that period. But if you do compare Bitcoin to the mainstream financial assets, it outperformed them all. So to go from a place where it's gone from a fraction of a penny up to $69,000 and now only one year later, the bulk of that supply and is a loss making position is quite staggering. What do you make of all the recent crypto layoffs? Coinbase announced the exchange is cutting about a fifth of its workforce. Silvergate and Genesis also announced layoffs this month amid the downturn. What is this signal and should we expect more of this in the aftermath of the fall of FTX? It's a continuation of the trend that we're seeing in the tech, tech sector overall. It's not just crypto. You know, we've seen layoffs, thousands of people laid off at, at Amazon, at Twitter, at Meta. Um, so crypto is, is not going to be immune to that. Tech is a very volatile sector of the economy. Um, I think on an overall basis, it only it only represents 2% of the, the American uh, workforce. So I don't think 
it will have massive macro implications. But I think crypto itself will get shook by this. And it's just a continuation of what we have been seeing. You know, we've seen a, a complete collapse of volume, of, of uh, interest, of prices. Everything has gone south in, in the year 2022 and, and layoffs are unfortunately a natural step in, in a lot of these companies uh, just paring back their their operations and just trying to survive. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we are back again tomorrow and we will see you then.